again. In this video, we're going to take a look at accepting input from the user. In a previous example, we've looked at adding two numbers, multiplying two numbers, printing the answer, and storing all of those values in variables using integers or doubles. In this example, we're going to try to make the program one bit more interactive by allowing the user to actually type in the values where the user is assigning the values to the variables rather than us doing it for them. To do this, we're going to use the scanner class. And in doing that, we're going to need to take a look at declaring an object, creating an object, using the next int and the next double methods. Now, when we declare objects or create objects, what we're actually doing is we're using an instantiable class. The class we're taking a look at using today is the scanner class. And the scanner class is a class that somebody else has written already, which is stored somewhere in a folder and it's available for us to reuse. So this is the nice thing about Java. Some of the tricky bits are done for us already and we can just reuse or redeploy an application that somebody else has used, somebody else has written. So in this instance, we'll use the scanner class, which is stored in the util package. And we'll take a look at how we manage that later on. The deal is, if we're going to use one of these classes and we're going to reuse it, we technically only reuse a copy of it. So we're going to make an instance of that class, and that instance is known as an object. And to do that, we have to give the object a new name. So when we use Scanner, we're going to call the object Keyboard. We could call it whatever we wanted, but Keyboard is the example I'm going to use in all of the programs that I write. And then we have to create that object. So we actually make the copy of the scanner class and create that copy with the new name for us to use later on. And if we were to open up the scanner class within that, we would see a number of methods, two of which would be next int and next double. And we're going to use those methods in our application to accept the values from the user. The best way to see all of this happening is to do it through an example. So we're going to take a look at this example. Calculate.java. The example asks us to develop an application that accepts two numbers from the user's input. The application should then calculate and output the sum of those two numbers. So we're going to look at accepting numbers from the user. We want to accept two. We'll do both integers and doubles. We'll do the examples, the example twice. And then we'll calculate and output the sum of those numbers, no matter what they happen to be. So let's go and take a look at TextPad and get started on this program. OK, so here I have TextPad open. And you'll see I have saved my file as calculate.java, because that's what we were asked to do in the problem. Again, we start every Java program with our comment that gives us the name of the file, calculate.java. It gives us the name of the author, F. Sheridan. And it gives us the date. And the date is the 10th of October, 2013. And we finish our comment with star forward slash. We start our class, public class, calculate. Open your curly bracket, don't forget to close it. And then we have our main method, public static void main string args. Open your curly bracket, don't forget to close it. And now we're ready to get down to business. So we want to develop an application that allows the user to enter two numbers and then calculates and outputs the sum of those two numbers. So what variables are we going to need? Well, we're going to need a variable to store each of the numbers. And let's deal with integers or whole numbers first. So int number 1 and int number 2. Then we need somewhere to store the sum of the, those two variables. So we'll have int sum. That's straightforward enough. A new step is going to be to declare any objects that we want to use in this particular program. Now we spoke about how when we want to accept no an input from the user, one option for us to use is the scanner class. The scanner class, like we mentioned before, is part of the util package. And in order to be able to use it, we have to first import that package. So we need to come back up to the top of our code, above our class header, or our class signature, and we need to import java.util.scanner, semicolon. 
and that's going to import the scanner class from the util package. That then allows us to declare an instance of scanner called keyboard. Now again, keyboard is just a term I'm using for my instance of scanner. You will see examples where it says scanner s, scanner s1, scanner import. It doesn't matter. What matters is that there are no spaces in the name, that you don't try to start it with a number, that you don't use any symbols. And for good practice, it should start with a lowercase letter. So that's our objects that we want to use declared. But the second step of that is to create the objects. OK, so any any objects that we want to use in this particular example should be created. So to do that, we say keyboard is a new instance of the scanner class. And then we must finish this with open and close round brackets and a semicolon. So we're simply saying make keyboard a new copy of scanner. And now our scanner, obj our object keyboard is available to use to accept input from the user. So we can get down to business. The first thing we'll do is we'll get the input from the user. Then we'll process the input and we'll do whatever calculations we need to do. And then we'll give the output to the user. So to get our input from the user, we're first going to ask for number one. So we start with number one equals. And then we're going to use our keyboard. And we're going to use the next int method because we want to grab the next int that the user types into the command window. OK, so keyboard.nextInt will grab what the user types into the command window. And because we're dealing here with system input, when we created our scanner class, if we just pop back up in here, we should do system.in. OK, when we do si printing out, we do system.out. And when we're reading in, we use system.in. So we need to make sure not to leave that out. So we use keyboard.nextInt to grab our value and to store it in number one. And similarly, we're going to do number two equals keyboard.nextInt to grab our second number. The only problem here is we haven't told the user to enter any numbers. So we should also add some instructions. So above where I've tried to grab the values, I should do my system.out.println. Please enter number one. And then I grab my first number into number one variable. And then I'll do another print statement, system.out.println. Please enter number two and I'll grab that value and store it in number two. My process then is simply my calculations. So my sum is going to be equal to number one plus number two. So I'm adding whatever's in number one to what's in number two and I'm storing it in sum. And that's straightforward enough. And we, that's exactly as we had it in the previous example. And then it comes to the output. And that's going to be the same as the last time as well. System.out.println. The sum of number one and number two is sum. Okay, so the sum of number one and number two is sum. And now when we compile this, we should get the, the output, the sum of and the numbers that we enter, and it gives us the solution. So let's compile that. Control and one on the keyboard compiles and control and two to run. So you'll see here it's saying please enter number one. So let's enter 20. Please enter number two, 30. The sum of 20 and 30 is 50. OK, so that's straightforward enough. So just to recap there, we're declaring a new object. It's the scanner object, which belongs in the util package. So we must import it first. We declare scanner keyboard. And then we make keyboard a new instance of scanner. And then the only difference is rather than in the last program, we said number one equals 100. Here we're saying number one equals 
keyboard.nextint. So whatever the next int the user types into the keyboard becomes our first number, and then the next int that they enter into the keyboard after that becomes our second number. We do our calculations as normal, and we do our output as normal. And that's this, this particular application for integers. If we wanted it to work for doubles, we're going to come back up and change our variable. Our data types are now going to become double. And then, instead of saying keyboard.nextInt, we're going to say keyboard.nextDouble. So that's for both of those commands. We'll compile that again, and we'll run it. And if we do 20.5 and 3.5, the sum of 20.5 and 3.5 is 24. And you'll see now we have all of our decimal points there. The only other thing I wanted to mention, I suppose, at this point is here we have three variables and they're all doubles. And I've declared them each on individual lines. You may, in some instances, see that variables can all be declared on the same line. So I could have equally said double, number one, number two, and sum, all on the same line. And really it makes no difference. The only reason I'm able to do this is because they're all doubles. If they were different data types, I wouldn't be able to do them all on the one line. But when the data type is all the same, I can separate them with commas and I can declare them on one line. It's up to yourself. You choose which suits you best and which you're going to remember best and you go from there. So that's user input. We've already taken a look at data types, variables and the general programming basics that you're going to need to know. The next thing we'll take a look at is instantiable classes, so maybe now have a look at that video.